and welcome back to another Let's Play. This is uh, Saiken and we're going to play Xenonauts 2, a freshly released game on Steam. I think today is the release date. I am uh, playing a more or less full playthrough. It depends how long uh, the game will be engaging. I am, upon popular request, at least putting in 20, maybe 25 missions and we'll see, we're going to see if it uh, then still continues to be fun. For those of you who are unaware about Xenonauts, let me give you a short rundown. Xenonauts is the spiritual successor of the original UFO Enemy Unknown game. Then there was uh, UFO Free and Open uh, UFO, which is basically the same original game, but with uh, slightly upgraded graphics. Then there was Xenonauts 1, which was kind of a collection of that and then transferred into uh, yet a bit more stable environment and modern uh, uh, production, so to speak. And now there is uh, Xenonauts 2 with a slightly streamlined experience, but the core is still very much the same. You are tasked to defend Earth, the aliens are, of, of course, going to um, introduce themselves and try to overpower Earth and uh, basically kill every kill or enslave everyone. And in this particular campaign, uh, to set the story arc, there's also kind of a sleeper organization that seems to be helping them. You can assume they are very much like uh, Advent in XCOM, so to speak. So they are trying to help you overthrow governments. So. We're going to play this game on more or less blind-ish playthrough. I've played a little bit of the uh, closed alpha, but we're now uh, very close to release, so we can actually start going at it. And uh, we're going to play on the hardest difficulty, which here is called Commander, which is a funny coincidence because Commander actually is the second hardest difficulty in XCOM. Uh, we are starting with 2 million. Uh, we start with a panic of 50. Once panic reaches 100, uh, the nations will withdraw. And starting, starting panic is across all territories, so huge problem right there. We have limited monthly funding, excessive enemies. We do have higher enemy accuracy, no health, no inflicted damage shown. Uh, there is no auto resolve in air combat. I need to play that uh, manually. There is no free attack rotation, um, so I need to do that um, manually as well. Armor is destroyed on death. We're having dynamic uh, UFO health, meaning uh, the UFO sometimes can be stronger. And we're playing with Iron Man mode. So those are the settings. And with that, we are going to leisurely skip the tutorial because tutorial is for others, not for me. Uh, we have also played the tutorial to be fair. So let's jump right into it and uh, look at a couple of mechanics and I will try over this playthrough to educate as much as I know about the game and the rest I think we're going to find out together. It uh, from a pure display perspective seems to be quite uh, easy to understand. So it is typically quite transparent in what it is trying to tell you, which means there is not a lot, uh, enough guessing or guesswork happening. Ah, Commander. Yep, apologies for the delay. I believe that was rather the point. Oh, this place is ex uh, um, isn't exactly easy to find. Commander, glad to see you. Welcome to the backup facility. I have your command room and a cache of emergency supplies. No getting around the fact that in the new home is a derelict uh, nuclear bunker of the 60s area. Hope you find uh, fine with cold showers. We say you wouldn't last in the military if you're not. What's the status regarding the cleaners, which is the other factions? Relocation brought us some time, but they're still after us. If we don't find a way to eliminate them, they will start attacking us here too but they're not even our biggest problem. Indeed, recent studies suggest uh, that uh, the aliens attack soon. We're nearing the end of the curve. UFOs uh, uh, begin to arriving through the sky more rapidly in size and quality. Doubt it will be long until the first full-blown invasion, and we certainly don't like uh, the sound of it. Uh, I suggest we make the most out of the time that we have, so let's place the base. So, for starters, this is Earth. And for further starters, uh, we do have three different uh, qu uh, quadrants. The inner one with one um, scan relay, the 
uh, medium one with two scan relays and then the outer one for three uh, radio relays so what we could do is we could place it somewhere here so that two stations already get us a good bang for the buck we could also be greedy and uh, sort of place it here ignoring the good old friends in Reykjavik Iceland so that would give us Middle East Europe Africa and all the way up to India second base we could place somewhere here I suppose and third base we could place in Cuba so that would be a three base approach I think that's good we're starting with uh, just the most area covered which would be Africa and that is um, Europe because that's what we're getting with it well, let's assign a bit of research shall we Common vehicles sound like a fantastic idea. Now, off to base management. Um, wait, 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 did we start the research? Yeah, we started the research. Okay, off to base management. So we do have three hangars. And for starters, we need uh, radi um, radar arrays. They cost a lot. With 400 grand each so I think what we're going to do is we're going to place one here for now down to 1.6 million not great but uh, we can live with it we do not have any training facility at the moment and the living capacity is a bit limited so living quarters uh, benefit from being adjacent to other living quarters which means if we put them down here, uh, these are living quarters, right? Yeah, they are. Okay, good. So we're getting more living quarters. Fantastic. Now, we want more research, which means laboratory is the way to go in order to handle that. There's a storage facility, right? Okay, I will leave space for one hangar here, so we're going to extend the laboratory down to here. Putting in another generator over here. And another laboratory over there. Fantastic. Now, off to training center. Training center gets training capacity of 12. We might need two squads, so I will create it in mind with enough uh, room. So workshop goes down to here. Third um, radar facility goes to here, which means we could put the uh, training facilities up here. And then we do have a medical center as well, right? Yeah, heal per day. No adjacent uh, adjacency bonus. Um, let me think about it. Yeah. Okay. So, medical center. We put here we do have uh, the workshop that can expand to here and then finally training center we again have insufficient power how much does another generator cost oh my god 200 
Not great. There we go. So we almost spent everything in expansion. Not a lot of funds um, available for us anymore. Let's do the next thing, which is soldiers. Soldier screening is important. Um, let's start with accuracy because uh, that's an important stat. We got a high strength, potentially shield uh, bearing uh, character. So that's good. Let's start with the most important stat, bravery. 38, um, thank you, but no thank you. Forty-one and low accuracy. Well, I had you back until I realized that you had bad uh, bravery. Forty-five and higher is fine. Okay, then reflex. High accuracy, low reflex. Hmm. So as a reminder, hit points are hit points. Uh, you would want to have 40 or more time units um, are just as far as you can move really uh, most of the shots take percentage and time units accuracy is how good you uh, can hit so we want specifically snipers and others to have high accuracy then we do have strength uh, which is equipment uh, slot but also um, carrying capacity and uh, so on so we want to make sure that we're not having people with ultra low values. 38 strengths, for instance, is a bit of a problem. Together with low accuracy, not really the preferred uh, person here. So that's another dismiss right there. Good. Reflex uh, is very important because uh, reflex and bravery are most difficult to raise. The others actually raise over time. These you raise very slowly. Bravery is the ability to withstand um, yeah, psychical mishaps, um, not fall into panic, and essentially just be a decent human being, uh, not be able to be controlled by aliens. And reflex is uh, the ability to react and overwatch is super important because every non-spend uh, time unit is automatically um, spent in the most efficient uh, way into overwatch shots. So if we want to have overwatch happen, we need to be fast. 73 of course is grandiose. Unfortunately, as you can see, all of uh, these guys do have a overall point system, so you can't have 70s across the board. Uh, those with high reflexes tend to have not so great accuracy and vice versa. Those with high accuracy, high hit points tend to not have the highest uh, reflex. Although not everybody is created equally. So let's go to the recruiting of soldiers. And we can already see whom we're not going to recruit. Low bravery. Um, I thought we just fired this guy. Okay, apparently we can rehire him. I mean, the bravery is great, but still the strength is not. Good bravery, excellent reflex, everything across the board great with that soldier. I like it. Accuracy is good. Um, this one here doesn't look bad either. 37 accuracy. Nope, not happening. This here is a good soldier as well. Um, these are good values, but 44 is almost on the low end side. However, the overall values are looking very nice on her. And we're going to the, the area where typically the other stats would need to look very, very good in order for me to, uh, to hire them. So we're just going to hire those four soldiers. These guys are in transit. Currently, we do have a team uh, for Skyhawk, which we're going to load out as and when necessary. I hope that the newcomers will come in. And 
Yeah, I, I would say we're starting with a high reflex, high bravery. We do have not enough soldiers for two teams, but we have enough to kind of rotate when people are getting injured. So, I think that's the start for now. In terms of engineering, Let's invest a bit into Defender's Armor as well. And we're broke as broke can be. Good, here we go. Got our first tactical mission, an alien research team. Uh, if we are victorious, we're going to reduce the panic by five in Africa, which is uh, helpful. So might as well want to do exactly that. So before we're going there, though, that's our target. Let's start with equipping our soldiers. And we're going to... Use high accuracy first. We want two snipers with high accuracy. 55 is really not that great. Unfortunately, these guys are not yet there. I don't want to risk it. It says transfer zero days. I don't know. When will they arrive exactly? During the night? Okay, I think we don't want to push it too far. All right. Good. Accuracy. Sniper and sniper that is good now next one we want strength high strength uh, targets uh, are going to be shield targets i am thinking about maybe taking two shield uh, targets um let's Take this one here as the second uh, shield target. Everybody else for now. Just go on assault so I don't mix the character classes up. Good. So we do have one sniper, two shield bearers. This is here is our second sniper. Good. So we want to end up with uh, two snipers, two frontliners, which are the shield uh, char uh, characters. And I would like us to have another grenadier and then a lot of heavies. So, in terms of strength. This guy here has a fantastic accuracy. I like that. So that might be our Grenadier. You need a lot of strength to just carry all of the stuff as well. And then those with uh, other decent strength will get heavy weapons. And the ones that do have a lot of time units can either be assault or rifleman. Okay, assault and then one rifleman. Oh, wait a second. This here looks better as a rifleman. 50 accuracy does not look that great, so might as well use an assault. Okay, so that's the the rough outline. In terms of 
just squad overall. The shields should go to the front. The snipers should go to the back. Assault and riflemen uh, should go in next, then grenadier, then heavies. So, in the aircraft screen, what we want is sniper, sniper is back. We want the heavy to be able to move out of the sides if needed. And we do have both of the shields in front. Grenadier in the middle and rifleman assault. Okay, cool. So now individual individual layout. Shields are great. I like them. Question is, can we pick another shield? Okay, they can't do it, but the question is, can someone else pick it up for them? <laughs> okay. Okay, not bad. Um, I will think about that. To essentially have reserve shields, because shields have hit points just like anything else, and uh, sometimes you simply need to uh, you simply need to drop them at the beginning and um, pick them up. Good. I will do the weight without the shield though. So let's start with the shield guys. Um, the shield guys main job is to absorb damage. They can have a secondary weapon, that's fine for a little bit of shooting, but it's mainly absorbing damage and being able to um, remove cover. So that's why I have those diffuse, uh, the diffusive chargers here to allow them to do exactly that. Very effective against terrain, easily remove uh, walls and objects. Takes a lot to set up though. How much would that be? Yeah, that would put a lot of time unit penalty on us. What I will say though is uh, with the weight, a little bit more f uh, flashbang grenades or something along those lines are not hurting. Just having the ability to suppress someone uh, will mean we can live longer. So that's good. Uh, awesome strengths, by the way. 70 strengths is just massive. You will see others won't be able to carry as much. But still, what, we're okay with a slight time unit penalty as long as we do have enough explosives available. I am saving on ammunition, as you can see, typically 15 is fine. Uh, and if push comes to shove, we can always get something else. Good, both assault and riflemen are the ones with uh, mad packs. Heavies might need mad packs as well. Generally tend to uh, find them super useful. So, assaults. Uh, that's a good uh, setup to begin with. Shotgun, a little bit extra shells. Can't get another one of the charges in, unfortunately. But, oh, this boy, uh, guy has 10 uh, time units penalty already. We don't want to do that. I like that extra tactical vest but it weighs a lot and you my friend only have 43 strengths so off we go we need um, movement from these guys so the time units are actually quite important and yeah we don't need more than one reload 
That's 16 shots. Good enough. Um, that is fine. Should we go like this? I definitely like a lot of explosives simply because uh, removing cover from the enemy is super helpful. I think we're going with that. And at the beginning, they are going to drop the shield. Put that in. And that'll be fine. Okay. Same here. We don't need a smoke grenade. We do have a lot uh, more strength to work with, so that's good. Uh, one magazine is plenty. And I think we want Defender Armor. Yep, that already puts you way into excess capacity. Well, that thing here weighs 12. And as much as I am in favor of having it, it is more efficient to have more explosives and use her as a foot soldier. Slight decrease on accuracy. Uh, difficult to say. Am I doing the right decision here? Because uh, the Defender Armor already applies a Malice. And the Tactical Module would just exactly offset that. And I would like to be north of, of um, 50 accuracy. Can't move as far in that specific setup. I don't want a lot of uh, time unit penalties. But I think we just gotta deal with it as it is at the moment. Uh, so I'm going to accept that, put that in. And she drops the shield as well. Now, on to the next guy. Or gal in that case. Less grenades. But I think accuracy will be important. Ammunition on the pistol will not be so important. I think we could live with that. But it also answers the question whether or not we can take a med kit. I think that is not going to work. On the heavy. Getting rid of most of the stuff that we don't need. Getting a medkit in instead. Better module for aiming. I think that is useful. We have plenty of ammo, so that's okay. What are we going to do? Uh, time units are not looking that great, so we got to be careful that we retain our mobility. But we do have a bit of weight left over. Hmm. I think we'll leave it as is. More defender armor. This is a very efficient trait. You want armor to not immediately die. Got a few more. I got a few more time units. So here we might be able to sneak in just a tiny bit more. Grenade of sorts. Accuracy doesn't look particularly refreshing. 45 isn't great, specifically if your main um, job is to deal damage, but we can suppress efficiently with a machine gun. Good, and finally the snipers. 
big fan of armor on them as well. This guy has a lot of strength. Might as well give him that extra plate. I don't think that we'll need a lot of charges. What I could see is a flashbang grenade and that's pretty much it. This guy only has limited strength, 43 isn't a bad grade. But we can put a flashbang grenade here as well. I think overall that's fine. Might as well give him a smoke grenade so that one sniper has a smoke, the other does have flashbang. Yeah, and what you can see as a general idea, I value um, so we're not going to do that for every mission, of course, but I wanted to showcase it before we jump into the first mission. I value clear roles in Xenonauts. I like people with uh, shields as frontline and just give them as much beefiness as possible. So they will run in, remove cover. Um, assault and uh, riflemen need to be fast so that I can actually get into flanking position. The Grenadier just needs enough aim and a lot of grenades so that they can remove even more cover. Heavies are there for suppression and snipers uh, are there to kill. So with that team we should be fine. You could uh, switch out one rifleman for another Grenadier or for another uh, Heavy. I just so happen to like that general setup for now. I think it's a decent uh, one. So let's launch the combat team. And launch the dropship. Of course, now the personnel arrived. Well, it doesn't help us, does it? We're there in the night. So let's uh, jump right into the battle. Dum 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 dum. All right, we are going to go in. First mission: eliminate all hostile units. Good. Are we in a night mission? I think it was night, wasn't it? Um, no, apparently it is not. Anyways. So, what we're going to do is, first things first, put that on the ground, take your shotgun soldier, thank you. Secondly, put that on the ground, take your rifle soldier, thank you. And now we can start. Enemy spotted right away. Two enemies spotted right away. Okay. Just double checking. Good. We got all of uh, the initial enemies, and it, as always, does not look great. So we need. 42 in order to actually shoot at them, which means we do a 15. That is, that would only allow us to do a burst. So I think it's okay that one time. Get down. And let's begin. Well, at least the guy is suppressed. Oh, 
All right, 45 to get here. Uh, duck down. And I think we're going to go for another suppression. Nope. Unfortunately not successful. Before we go further... This here should not hit our soldier. Um... 35%, 44%. We're going with that shot. Come on. Nice little hit. I like it. Duck down. We unfortunately moved, but there's no way around it. Sixty percent. Now nah, we're going to focus on one for now. Very good, because the other one is suppressed, meaning he offers less of a problem for us. Twenty-one. Good enough to throw a grenade. But good enough for Overwatch, I think. Makes 20% more harder to hit. <coughs> yeah, we're we're going to do a normal uh, shot if possible. Yeah, too bad, but we're going to use that as an overworld shot. There might be a chance to hit them. Behind cover. And I think we're just going to hunker down. <laughs> we could uh, throw flashbangs as and when needed. That's too far. But throw range is actually not too bad. Good, got a shotgun. And I think we want to advance. And uh, then hunker down as far as possible. Move up. Anchor down. Hmm. Could remove the cover, but it really serves us at the moment. Uh, so there is no point in doing that. We're rather switching guns. A couple of overwatch shots. Good. Anchor down, and I think we have a first round. Not the best, but uh, we suppressed one, and the other one is far away. We can really realistically only shoot the uh, guy with the shield. Xenonauts um, very much promotes a create a death ball type of game. But we don't want to create too many different fronts.
Move up. Take the shot. Yep. When a shotgun hits, it hits very well. Removing cover. <laughs> and removing the alien. Okay, slowly but surely we're progressing further forward. Hunkers down. We're going to go in from this side. Just need to make sure that the other side is safe and sound. Okay, well... Just making sure that there is nothing behind. That's how you deal with vision. Simply creating your own little nice neat, uh, neat path. And Corporal here will just go into Overwatch. And I think we are done for this turn. So friendly are moving here. This is a dangerous spot to be in. There are so many directions from where the enemy could come. up sniper moves here other sniper moves here I'm just trying to get better line of sight management Getting our grenades to the front line. And this is merely a protection if someone comes from up here that we're ready for next turn. Okay. Good, we know enemies are here. And there we go, find the other enemies. Oh, civilians do have shotguns, I like that. Can't go down without a fight, right? Nope, we don't want that. Moving to the side. 
Straight 100%. Love it. We don't know whether or not he's there. Pretty sure there is no one in that direction. So let's move up. Heavy weapon. We don't know if this is a secure area, so again, we gotta be a bit mindful not to charge in too much. Supporting that second flank here. Sniper moves forward. Is down. Do we have enough? Yep, for a single shot, we do. Always try to optimize these little things, switch to the sidearm. Moving up here, hunker down and look in this direction. That's one overwatch shot with a nice little shotgun. And we're covering this side okay cool so far it actually looks relatively good for us mm. all right the aliens are trying to overload uh, one side that is not new what is happening, quote unquote, regularly? Listen, uh, how about we're removing cover here? I could have been better. All right, reload that weapon. leads for one so we need to go and take care of the bleeding soon ten times seventeen versus Let's just try a full auto. Good. That teaches you manners. Uh, how did I heal again? Has been a while. Select them, can can't we? Oh, 
All right, what am I missing? Okay, apparently it didn't work the first time. All we needed to do, of course, is start healing. Good, next up, moving in, using a nice flash grenade to suppress this guy, you're not going anywhere buddy. Figuring out there is another alien, and moving back into cover. We need a free line of sight uh, and snipers, and we need them more at the front line than anywhere else. Good, one sniper moves over here. The other one moves over there. We be just need to get them better into uh, in in a position where they can interact with the battle. So we have a couple of overwatch shots here. I don't think. 22% uh, is really good enough. As and when the guy moves, uh, the overwatch shots will start to rain down. Okay, fantastic. Nice little bugger here. Um, wants to get a couple of pistol shots. I knew it. Good, more pistol shots, fabulous. Trying to suppress him a bit more. Nearly failed. Three times twenty or one times sixty. Uh, I'm taking the three times twenty because it's a suppression on top of it. Oh, we're already done. Okay, cool. Very good. Interesting first mission. 
Interesting. So, I think we got shot once for mild injuries. But other than that, the shields actually work well. I need to consider if I really want that extra shield to lay down at uh, the starting point. It is nice to have it as a backup so that a shield uh, wielder is not completely useless. But might as well just drop them a gun. Mm, now by thinking about it, we're, we're, we might be able to do that. Just drop them a gun afterwards. Because before they are back, taking the shield and then needing to go to the front line, that might work on a non-timed mission, but I think it is incredibly difficult to really pull that off on a timed mission. Okay, well... No, I wanted the act after action report, damn it. So for starters, we have no additional funds. I think. 71% hit points, okay, so Claire will need a bit of a bit of a break. But other than that, we actually did very, very well. And everybody got some extra stats. Cool. Got some alien autopsy as an option. And we can also get better armor and so on. But none of that really matters now. We are continuing. Defender armor has been done. Okay, so we have a base stock of all of uh, the armor. And we don't have enough production, uh, enough funds to produce anything else, so we're actually good. Local politicians have been adopted by unknown masked figure. Funds are slowly rising, and there is our combat platform but it will cost a lot of money to get that one done. I would like to go straight into magnetic weapons. Eight days, love it. The problem now with the production is, I think the Mars platform costed 250 grand, right? And even the Sentry with 40 grand. Yep, not happening. At the moment, our total income would be 1.6 million. So let's get it on. We need to do with what we have currently. There isn't that much that we can do about it. Lots of assassination happened, but really we can't do much about that. I'm still waiting for the first UFO to show up. And look at that. We got the generator is done. So plenty of power now going forward training and the other stuff so, uh, soon happens and with it also will be the a uh, little bit larger uh, scanning area cool so the cleaners uh, here uh, here to capture resource if we do successfully do this mission minus 10 panic level global and we can even get some extra cash which would be well warranted but it's not an easy mission uh, the last time uh, that I've done it, I've done it with the Mars, 
Uh, this time it needs to happen without, so it's actually going to be quite a difficult one. But I'll prepare the team and we go are going to do that in our next episode. It has been a long introductory episode, but I think you get the, the gist of uh, Xenonauts 2 for now. If you're interested in buying the game, there is a link, uh, an affiliate link below. Uh, you will get a bit of uh, a discount, I think 5 or 10%. And uh, you will support the channel as part of that. So thank you so much for that. If you are deciding to purchase the game, as always, take care and see you in two days when we continue the playthrough. Bye bye.